Well, look at you. Never late, always on time. I've always appreciated that about you. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is another Monday. It is August 21st. Now, in this show, what we like to do is go running around all the markets, looking at the stocks under five bucks, trying to find ones that have potential to make us money. Any stock under five bucks is a penny stock, and if they've got potential to make us money, they're a hot penny stock. And one of the best ways I found to find hot penny stocks is not to go through the news and the filings. I don't know what's hot or not, but I do know a hot chart when I see one. So I'm looking for charts that have heat first. I don't even know the names of the companies. I just pull up a penny stock scan and I start going down through the charts looking at them just seeing what's there. If I see one that has a lot of volume coming in or a breakout set up, I know I've got a chart that other people are gonna be looking at. That gives it heat. Once I find a chart that has heat, then I go rummaging around through all of the press releases and the filings trying to find a catalyst. When I find it, then I've got myself a hot penny stock. Well, today I was doing my research, running around, trying to find three stocks to talk to you about, and I came across one that really caught my interest. It needs more than just a few minutes, and I'm excited about it. I think it is going to be a dominant leader in its new upcoming sector, and I'm going to share it with you tomorrow. <laughs> Not today, tomorrow. Though I've got three hot stocks I want to share with you right now. First one is in the AI industry. This is Generative AI Solutions Core, ticker AICOF. Now, they just don't use AI, you know, plug it into chat GPT or something. They are creating AI products. They are buying up AI companies. They are creating subsidiaries to house those companies. They've got lots of news and the chart is hot. It's ready to break out. It's an atypical breakout chart with the 50-day SMA because there's not a 200. On the one hour chart, it's looking even better. We had a nice jump today, not only in price, but in volume. So I think it's a good time to be considering this company. And if you're looking for a AI company that's just full-fledged AI, this is a company. It looks like that's all they're gonna be dealing with is their own AI products. It's a startup company without any revenues, but the news that's coming out right now that I'm gonna share with you is gonna change that. So this stock is looking good from a ground floor opportunity. So AI, COF finished the day. What's with all the extra numbers? Just a little over 72 cents and just a little under 36%. She is on the middle tier of the OTC. This is the better tier. You got the pinks on the bottom. You can think of them as the ghetto. You got, <laughs> you got the QB as the middle tier, your middle class. And then you got the QX. Those are your posh people, the rich ones. QB, it's a nice area to be in because they have to audit their financials. We're getting validated numbers. We can actually weigh up the company now with fundamentals. You don't get that with pinks. We've also got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. More validated, verified information. This is being done behind the scenes by an unbiased third party, the OTC markets. That's part of their job. So if ever you are trading a pink, the best you're probably going to get is a verified profile and a transfer agent. So you'll want to look for those. So everything is looking good here. Plus, I see they've got independent directors. Now, the only reason I have found to have independent directors listed over here, or to even have them on the payroll, is when you have plans to uplist. Now, they may have already used them to come to the QB from the pink. I don't know. But if they have plans to go any higher, they're going to need them then as well. So let's take a look at the description we got here. We do have one here, but I have found when you go to the news presses and get the most current press release, you normally get the most current description of the company. So what we've got over here, Gen AI is a pioneering artificial intelligence company focused on developing a vertically integrated AI solutions business through its proprietary MAI cloud platform. With the development and commercialization of AI-powered tools and solutions for businesses and consumers across multiple industries. At Gen AI, our mission is to harness the power of AI to create transformative products and services that benefit businesses and consumers across various sectors. 
Our team of talented AI professionals and engineers are dedicated to developing state-of-the-art AI-based solutions that have broad applicability and can be seamlessly integrated into diverse workflows. Now, I jumped over here to the website to try to get a little more information, and they tell us over here some of the products they've already got devised. They've got Tobacco Titan. This is an exciting new product being developed by Gen AI Tobacco Inc., a subsidiary of Gen AI, to deliver artificially intelligent power large language model dedicated to harnessing the power of artificial intelligence for the tobacco industry. Now, this one I found very interesting. I like that word interesting. Global AI Newswire was created with the intention of developing a newswire analysis service for investors that use AI to perform various functions related to press releases issued by publicly listed companies. Well, I could probably put that to use. Another one here is Remits. They have developed a unique approach to medical billing. And then this one here, Classmate App. You can quickly find answers to your educational questions in every category and gain a deeper understanding of the subject matter. So this is just, you know, ask it a question and it'll give you an answer. Don't let your kids know about this one. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that's a nice increase. We're looking at at least a thousand percent increase going from 111,000 shares up to 1.2 million shares today. Share structure for the company. All right, we do have some information here. Trust in it, assuming it's right. Outstanding share count, 71.5 million. Insiders own about 22 million. That means we get about 50 million of those shares. Not a bad share count. It's not low, but 50 million isn't bad. Financials for the company. They don't have anything on the books yet. There is nothing here. Now, I don't see Shell Company. I don't see Shell Risk. Normally, if a company hasn't got any money on the books, they're one or the other. I don't know what the situation is here, but at least there's nothing up there because both of them, uh, in either case, right now they're not making money. But when we look at the news, you're going to see it is right around the corner. Actually, it probably just needs to be deposited. Looking at her disclosures. Uh, we've really got nothing here, just their financials. So let's jump on over into that news. Now, this is the news I was going to focus in on, and I saw the more button, so I kicked it out, and boom, there was a lot more news down there. Now, suffice it to say, all of this news, if you remember correctly, over here, it said, coming soon. I guess coming soon. Well, over here at the news, they are telling us they've already launched these. Gen I signs non-binding letter of intent to acquire medical billing AI company. And then they close that one up here. Uh, launches artificial intelligence project to create a newswire service for investors. We read about that one. Gen I launches Tobacco Titan. That is all from May and back. So it looks like they've got those actually on the market. And who knows what else they got going on. Now I've picked it up here from June, June 12th. They created a subsidiary called MAI Cloud. I think this is where they're housing all of their AI companies because they've been accumulating a lot of them. MA Cloud, a subsidiary of GenAI, acquires AI computer business. I do believe this one is, uh, oh God, we'll, we'll see. They just got another one. It's mentioned in the news. So they got another one here. They closed that deal. Then here in uh, July, Genai subsidiary approved to join NVIDIA's inception program and makes a purchase of Hyperplane AI computer hardware. Now these last three here, I do want to dive into and give you a little bit of information. So this one here, they tell us that the company announces that Pulse AI, that was that other new company they just got a hold of. They announced that Pulse AI Compute Solutions, a wholly owned subsidiary of Gen AI, has been approved to join NVIDIA Inception Program and has issued a purchase order for the purchase of approximately 1.8 million of hardware capable of delivering over 350,000 hours of artificial intelligence computer time per year. So what you've got here is that the company has been brought in as an elite member to the 
NVIDIA's Inception program. And as you're going to see down here, they get benefits. They get to buy stuff at a discount. And that's what they just did. They bought a whole bunch of really nice hardware from NVIDIA for $1.8 million. NVIDIA Inception is an innovative program to, to designed to support companies with advancements in AI and data sciences. NVIDIA Inception offers a limited number of carefully selected members exclusive and discounted access to, new, to NVIDIA's technology. NVIDIA Inception plays an important role in shaping the future of AI and data-driven companies from providing the latest technical tools and resources to fostering a culture of innovation and collaboration. So now they're hobnobbing with NVIDIA and that's good. That's a big boy on the block. So this company has got nice friends. Another piece of news that came out July 13th. Janai Sub signs a $6 million purchase agreement with Silicon Valley AI customer. The company's wholly owned subsidiary, MAI Cloud Solutions, has entered into a purchase agreement dated July 12th, 2023. This customer is located in Silicon Valley. They're not letting us know who it is for whatever reason. MAI Cloud has agreed to provide the customer with access to approximately 350,000 hours per year of AI compute service for a period of up to seven years subject to terms and conditions of the purchase agreement. Now that's interesting. They just bought for a 1.8 million the hardware to produce 350,000 hours. Now they've turned around and sold those 350,000 hours for six million dollars or at least for a seven-year contract they tell us here the customer has agreed to pay mai cloud a fee of approximately seventy thousand dollars per month approximately eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars in revenue will be paid in the first 12 months so that's going to be revenues coming in that this was back in july and do they have a time here when this is supposed to start? Yes, here, which is anticipated to be within the next 60 days, July, August, September. So in the next 30 days, this should happen and we should start seeing revenues coming on the books. That's always a big deal. And that last piece of news is another sweet deal they've got. Jedi announces acquisition of Speak GPT, an AI powered virtual assistant. The company announces that it has entered into an asset purchase agreement to acquire certain intellectual property assets from MetaChain Technologies. They are going to acquire all the intellectual property rights, source code, interface, and other elements of a software package required to operate an artificial intelligent asset, which will be a mobile app. And they pr presume it is going to be called Speak GPT. Now they tell us here they get the app light paper which details how this works, text to speech implementation. So you can upload PDFs, Word, a book, and it'll read it to you like a human would. Source code, obviously you want the source code or isn't gonna work, and a prototype app for iOS and Android. This prototype version of Speak GPT is fully functional and compatible with both iOS and Android platforms. It demonstrates the core features, including the Chat GPT API integration animated visual interactions and the text to speech functionality. It is expected that the acquisition of the IP assets will close on or about August 21st, 2023. That's today, folks. <laughs> Maybe that's why there was a jump in price. Maybe that's why there was a jump in volume. All I know is that things are moving forward. They've got so many companies. They are devising products. They're getting the products out there not only to industries, but the consumer. Speak GPT is going to be an app that you and I can tap into AI anytime we want to. Folks, this is going to be hot. I think it is going to launch. So I think the charts, even though she's been light on trading, I think that is probably going to change. And if it doesn't change immediately, we like to look at stocks that have potential to run in the next few days. But potential comes in a lot of sizes and time periods. This one looks like it would be good down the road. Wouldn't you agree? Let's go take a look at that chart. Oh, my favorite part. We get to do some charting. We are over here at Thinkorswim. This is the free trading platform you get when you sign up with TD Ameritrade. And that's free too.
So we are looking at ticker AICOF, Generative AI Solutions Corporation. Now this is a six month, four hour view, but it only goes back to May 16th. I don't know what the deal is. When I discovered this, I went to see if there was a IPO or a reverse takeover or a merger or something. I couldn't find the information, but obviously something happened. In either case, this was their first day under this sticker, and she was at roughly 95 cents. The very next day, bring that down, <laughs> she jumped all the way up here to $3.29. But since then, she has been falling. She had a little bit of rolls here and there and a pop or two, but for the most part, she was coming downhill, hitting a low here of about 40 cents at the very start of August. Now off of that low bubble, she started to climb. She banged through the 50 a few times, then suckled right up underneath it for a few bars, and now she's up on top with the news coming out, with all the volume and the price jump. It's looking hot all of a sudden. Our oscillators down here, we have a crossover on our PPO that just happened today and is pushing up. We just crossed the signal line on our MACD. Green bars are accumulating. And our RSI took a nice jump today, going from 47 up to 69. And right now, she's at a nice and comfortable 65. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, now you can see the breakout a lot better. She was at a high of 79 here, came down to that low, bounced off of that low. Look, you can see she just beelined straight to that 200. She was ripping like a pair of jeans on a hippopotamus. Came down here, bounced off of that 50-day SMA, and launched again. Look at that. One huge bar wanting to get up on top of the 200, did not retreat, and has been sticking up there all day, and is sitting on top of its nine-day SMA right now. That is looking very good. Osculators, our PPO and our MACD are both high, but they are pulling back right now, as you would expect with that, and our RSI is cooled down to about 60. Our 200-day SMA is just about flat. With just a little more push, this is easily going to turn around, and that will help the price to rise. Looking at our five-day, five-minute, well, that looks not too bad. At least our low is in this corner, 41 cents. She got up over top of that 200-day SMA, came down, hit it, tested it a few times, Launched again here, hitting a high of 78 cents, and then went sideways. Now, I would have presumed that she was biding time, waiting for an SMA, most likely to 50, to come underneath and bump her to get her to run. But she cut right through it today. I seen a couple of uh, penny stocks do this today, and I was like, why? <laughs> Normally, that's enough to get it to bounce. But she hovered up underneath, falling deeper, and was looking scary, I admit. She then jumped up here banged her head on the 200-day haul, which is a lot like your 200-day SMA. It just gives more credence to current prices. And then she's fallen back up underneath. But as you can see, she's hanging around that 50-day SMA. She's not getting far. Now, I don't like it when she gets under the 9. That's the worst. You can't climb if you're under the 9. You got to be on top of it. And right now, she has gotten back on top of it, I think, 71. Yeah, she is right on top of it right now. Osculators are cool on the five-minute chart. But folks, we're looking at a startup company here. Maybe she will bounce tomorrow because of the chart setup or the day after. That would be great. But honestly, I think this company is in the runnings for one of those lead AI companies. They're getting products out to industries, you know, made just for particular sectors. They are getting it out to the consumers, which I think is going to be super duper hot. Chat GPT was smothered by consumers, not corporations. So I think the company's got a very hot product here. When it gets released, <sighs> And of course, they're probably going to make their money on the advertising from it and not charge, but I don't know that for sure. So AICOF, do some more research on this one. It's going to be worth your time and definitely put it on your watch list. You could surprise us. Now, we haven't done this for a while. We are looking at a warrant, a warrant attached to a SPAC. A warrant is a little stock attached to a big stock. I'll explain what that means in a minute. So we are looking at ticker FNVTW. This is the warrant for the company Finovate Acquisition Corp. Now, as you can see, the warrant is a penny stock. She is down here at seven cents and had a great day, had almost 56% gains. Now, the company that this warrant is attached to 
is Finovate Acquisition Core, ticker FNVT. But see the price of the stock, $10.85. Okay, this is what's going on. Finovate Acquisition Core is a SPAC still looking for a deal. What is a SPAC? Well, that's an acronym. It stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Company. What that is, is a company that comes on in the major exchange without any business, without any revenues. All they're doing is securing a ticker. And they're going to look for a company that wants to uplist from a lower exchange or maybe a private company that wants to get onto the major exchange but not go through all the rigmarole and bull and time and expense of doing that. This is just an easy sit-in. Plus, that SPAC is selling shares ahead of time at $10 a share. So we're all buying shares with the hopes and dreams that they're going to make this big old deal and we're going to be part of a nice company. Well, they get 18 months to two years to do this. If they do not close a deal in that amount of time, the company must give us our money back. You heard me right. There is a money back guarantee with SPACs. You'll get your $10 back. But what this means is, is that the stock is only worth $10 until they close a deal. Not negotiate it, not talk about it, not sign letters of intent. They've actually got to close the deal. So the price is only worth $10 on the major exchange stock right here. Now we see it at $10.85. You can bid it up if you want to, but if this company fails to make that deal and you bought them at $10.85, you're only gonna get $10 back. You won't get that 85 cents. So what happens is when news comes out that they are in negotiation, they are signing a letter of intent, it isn't the stock that moves. It may move a couple pennies, but big deal. What moves is that warrant. It's the only thing that can move. Now, warrants don't normally get the same sort of volume that the stock does. Stocks can get millions and millions of shares. You're not going to get that with warrants. You may get 100,000 shares moving, but because of the spread on the ask and the bid, the price jumps and it jumps very quickly and you can get 50, 100% gains very fast. It can jump 1,000%. I've seen them go 10,000%. So when the news comes out, which this company has right now, it isn't the stock that moves, it's the warrant by default. There is nowhere else to put the excitement. Now, the one thing you have to be leery of with warrants is when you go to sell. Make sure that you're selling at the price you want. As I said, the spread on the ask and the bid can be awesome. It can go from one cent to 10 cents, and you'll see it go from one cent, which you bought it at, and it goes to 10 cents, and you go, woohoo, I just made a thousand percent gains. Well, look, ah, it still says one cent for the sale. You can't get any more. Even though it's at 10 cents, it's still at a penny. You've got to have a couple people establish that price is real. A couple people got to buy it at 10 cents. Then it'll stick. Now, somebody may buy it at 7 cents, and that may bring up your bid to like 3 cents. My point, watch the bid. Watch what you're selling for. Make sure you get what you want. So let's take a look at that big news that came out. They are in the midst of starting to close a deal. It's just the beginning of it. This news came out today. The company announces a merger with Skage International Limited, a zero emission solution provider focused on new energy, heavy duty commercial vehicles and e-fuel solutions. Now I had to zoom around and find it, but this company is dealing with hydrogen. Now all the companies we've been looking at, I don't care if they're hydrogen or electric, we only see companies making light duty trucks vans. We're not seeing anybody make these huge semis. Well, that's what this company is talking about. And it is very interesting because of the mileage they are getting. They tell us down here that the transaction represents a post combination value of $1 billion for Sage. So when they get on the market, they're going to be worth $1 billion. So it's no little deal. They tell us that the company is headquartered in Nanjing, China. Skage is a zero emission solution provider focused on new energy, heavy duty commercial vehicles and e-fuel solutions. Skage has completed the design, production and testing of several new energy commercial vehicles, including the Galaxy 2 truck. Galaxy 2 truck is one of the earliest new energy hybrid heavy duty trucks in China. You ready for this? To operate with a driving range of 2000 kilometers. 
I'll do the math for you. That's 1,242 miles on one fill-up. Wow, that is outstanding. For a semi, not no little car, <laughs> which aims to solve the range anxiety problem of new energy heavy trucks. Skage has entered the batch delivery stage for Galaxy 2 and expects the new Galaxy series based on hydrogen and hydrogen derivatives will achieve zero carbon while meeting the economic needs of most customers. This is not only clean energy revolution, but also a gorgeous performance of artificial intelligence and we have made it a reality. Now I searched for more information about that artificial intelligence. What are they doing with it? But that is incorporated. What we're missing here is a closing date. I don't see any date for when this is going to close. Not that it really matters because I'm not telling you to buy the stock. We are talking about the warrant. Since the stock can't move on this news that just came out today, the warrant will move. So I'm expecting there to be a bounce tomorrow. Should be. How big? God only knows. Let me show you the chart we're dealing with. It's an atypical breakout chart. Taking a look at the warrant for Vinovate Acquisition, ticker FNVTW. This is a six month, four hour view. She is lightly traded, but that is a hot atypical breakout chart nonetheless. Now our low bubble was in the danger zone back in November at 0099. This is a NASDAQ stock and warrants have a minimum bid price requirement. They cannot go underneath a penny for too long. If they go underneath a penny, they'll get a warning. They got to get back up over a penny. If they fail, they'll just get yanked off of the major exchange and disappear. Well, she got out of that red zone. Matter of fact, she got real excited here in May. She jumped from about four and a half cents to 23 cents. You're looking at a 500% jump right there. She came back down underneath the 200, settling on the 200 day haul, which we have seen a lot of penny stocks respecting. She's had some nice breakthroughs here with these spikes going through the 200, only the spikes. She's come right back down, not any lower. So it shows me she's just tapping on it. She's saying, I want to get out of here. Let me out, let me out. And then right here, she is starting to break out. She's bounced off of that 50, had that spike up over top. And right now she is way over it, way up here at 0 0.069. She is securely sitting on top of the 200 now. Lots of volume came in today. Oscillators are pushing up the PPO percentage price oscillator. Read it just the same way as you read the MACD. That too is pushing up. We've got our green bars accumulating and our RSI is up at 65 right now. Taking a look at that 20 day, one hour view. Huge pops, right? She jumped here from two and a half cents to almost 10 cents. Another huge pop going from three and a half cents up to 10 cents. Now she is working her way up slowly. She isn't jumping anywhere, but she is climbing. She is now on her nine day SMA floating above the 20 and the 50. And those are curving up right now. Our PPO MACD are looking good, still pushing up. RSI is up at 60. Five day, five minute. How much are we gonna get here? Oh, we got a lot more activity than I was expecting. A lot of times you'll just get two bars, but this one, I guess the news had something to do with it. She had a nice jump from two days ago. She was at three and a half cents. She doubled that today, hitting seven and a half cents. Went sideways for a while, tried to hang on to this 20, didn't do it. Then comes in a new SMA. She starts pushing down towards that 50, but now she's pushed away with a big bar and strong volume at the end of the day, putting herself above the 20. Oscillators all look strong. You can see that every single one is pushing up like they're ready for recovery. This looks like it's ready to bounce folks. And you can't be putting this on your watch list waiting for volume. I'll be honest, you wait for volume, that's it. As soon as volume hits, it's moved. That's just the way it is. Right now our spread is, uh, the bid is at four cents and the ask is at seven, eight. That's almost 100% spread on the bid and the ask. So if someone comes along and buys this, it's going to push it up to 7, 8, or it's going to drop down to 4. It can whittle down. When shares start selling regularly, you'll see that ask and bid get closer and closer. So I like FNVTW for tomorrow. 
Last ticker we're taking a look at also comes from the major exchange, the NASDAQ. This is Koru Medical Systems, ticker KRMD. Now her chart is breaking out. She's breaking out over the 50-day SMA right now, but more importantly, she's bouncing off of a very low, low bubble. This bubble is just a smidge above her 52-week low. Now, when you get low bubbles like that on a company that has value, and this company looks to have value to me, that is nothing more than a flashing for sale sign saying, come buy my shares while they're cheap. It's a deal. Well, that low bubble came out just about the same time the financials did, which weren't bad. And there was just an insider buy as well. You add all that up together, sounds to me like there's going to be a bounce on the chart. So KRMD, she finished today at $2.65 with just a little more than 3.5% gains. Now they tell us here that the company designs, manufactures, and markets proprietary medical devices primarily for ambulance infusion and emergency medical applications to be sold domestically and internationally. Now, I, I am aware of a few of the products they have, but honestly, the catalyst isn't about the product, so we're not going to focus in on that. It is about the financials, but you will see some headline news about some stuff that they're involved with. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Ouch. Ouch. We dropped about 40%. She was doing a mere 100,000 shares a day for the last 30 days. Today, she did a meager 63,000 shares. Hopefully, that'll be better tomorrow. Share structure for Koru. Well, the outstanding share count isn't too bad. We're at about 45.5 million. Insiders own about 17 million of those shares. That leaves us about 22.5 million in the float. If these numbers are correct, the float isn't too bad. Financials for Koru. Well, over the last three years, there hasn't been a lot of change. $23, $24 million. Had a jump here at the end of 2022, jumping to almost $28 million. And they got to keep almost $15.5 million of that. Looking at her quarterly, she's growing, going from $6 million to $7 million, holding steady right there. Now, they did just have another quarterly report come out. See the first quarter here, we're at 7.3 million. Looking at the most recent quarterly report, they tell us here they did 6.9 million. So it took a dip, not a big one, but they did take a dip quarter to quarter. But looking at it year over year, the same time period last year, they gained over last year 6%. So this is better, <laughs> believe it or not. The uh, international core business also grew 17%. Uh, based on the increases of global drug availability. Now, this is interesting. They've got two pieces of news that you'll see based on this here. The company announced a new novel therapies collaboration for a phase three study. There is another company that has a drug that's going through a phase three trial. They want to collaborate with this company and use their Freedom 60 infusion system with their drug. They believe it's going to give them better results during a phase three trial. I don't have any knowledge what it's about. I just know about the collaboration. And then the company has submitted a 510K for a new device for Freedom M60 infusion system with Hisentra. These are pre-filled syringes. Whatever their medication is or whatever the stuff is, they're putting it in their syringes, which is making things a lot easier for everybody. And the last piece of information I consider the biggest part of the catalyst, even though it reads bad. Reduced. The company has reduced 2023 net revenue guidance. This is their projections for how much money they believe they're going to make by the end of the year. Now, this is important. I have seen financials come out that had big revenues. They beat all expectations, just wild, but their guidance was low. They were projecting losing money over the year. Soon as people read that, it didn't matter how good the financials were now, investors are concerned about the future. Well, they are telling us they're dropping them here down to 31 to 32 and a half million. They're dropping it by about a million just from 32 and a half to 33 and a half. That is bad news, but come on, they are letting us know that is up 11 to 17% over last year's revenues. 
So really what they're saying is, we're doing good. We're going to be better at the end of the year than we were last year. Just not as good as we thought. That could be because of the economy. And let me tell you what, you don't want to come in with high numbers at the end of the year, but actually do low numbers. The, the investors will crucify the company for getting it wrong. So you've got to be really accurate on this. So I see this as a positive. Jumping over to those disclosures, this is where we find our insider buy, Form 4. This is whenever an insider acquires or disposes of shares. They don't necessarily have to buy them and sell them, just get them or lose them. In this case, somebody actually bought them. This is Casella Robert. She is a director and she has just bought on the 17th, I believe it was, 19,000 shares at $2.60 a piece. That's got to be close to $40,000. Now, that's not a ton of shares. It's nice, no doubt about it. $40,000 isn't a ton of money, but it's a chunk of cash. What's relative here is how many shares they now own, at least in my book. Now they own 41,000 shares. That's not a big number either. So what am I looking at? They doubled. They doubled down. That is twice as many shares as they had before. And they bought these after the financial, not before the financial, hoping to get the bounce. They bought them afterwards. Now, I always put it this way. Insiders know more than we do. They know as much as we do, but they also know more. And a lot of times insiders will buy shares because of something they know and we don't. So I'm wondering, what do they know that I don't? Last thing we need to take a look at is that news. So there is the financials, which we have taken a look at. And here are two pieces of news that came out in July. Koru Medical System announces the submission of the Freedom 60 and Koru Medical announces the Novel Therapies collaboration. So we've basically covered all of the bases. And I think there's enough on base to get a run in. Let's go take a look at that chart. We are now looking at a one-day, one-year chart for Koru Medical, ticker KRMD. There's your 52-week low back in October. She hit $2.13. Had a nice strong rip for many a month, hitting a high of $4.48 at the start of May. And then she fell hard down to our low of $2.20. Now I've drawn some resistance and supports here we can play with. She is hitting her head right now on this one at $2.74. Our next one is at $2.95 and this one up here is at $3.24. Jumping down to that $6 month four hour view so as you can see our 200 day sma is rolling over right now we're not real happy about that after she hit that 52 week high she fell hard down to our low of two dollars and 20 cents the financials came out just before we hit that low bubble she has bounced off of it gotten through her 200 day haul was working to get through that 50 and she did it today she jumped up there tapped that resistance and has fallen back but she is over top of the 50-day sma the volume is nothing special to talk about today but our oscillators look dreamy look we've got that spread on my ppo that's this blue line up here and my adx trend continuation i put these two next to each other and when i see the v that spread i know my price is going up guaranteed so that looks sweet our MACD, it's crossing the signal line right now, and our green bars are accumulating, telling me it is pushing up. And our RSI, it is just over 55 at 55.6. 55 is the basement. I don't like to see that any lower than that. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, our 200 looks sweet. She came down here, and right now she has leveled off right when she broke out of it. She was down here on that low. She got up over top of her 50, went to the 200, tagged it once, tagged it twice, gave us a spike, a breakthrough, right? Our directional, intentional spike, even went through the support and resistance. Came back down, bounced off of our 200 haul. Like I said, lots of penny stocks respecting it. And now she has pushed herself nice and evenly right over that 200-day SMA, and she's up there right now. Oscillators are still pushing up. PPO, MACD, RSI. RSI is now at 58. Looking at our five-day, five-minute. 
Oh boy, that's a lot of volatility. She's going here from 251 up to 267, down to 247. So you're getting like a nickel and a dime movement up and down on this 200 day SMA. She hit this high, one extreme, came down to the other extreme to balance everything off. And then she went for that 200 and now she's ready to climb. Now she has pulled back on the aftermarket hours here. She's broke her 20. Looks like she's coming down to the 50. She could bounce off to 50. We've got to watch it, but all the SMAs have already crossed the 200. So everything is looking strong in that regard. Oscillators, they're all pushing down right now because of that late day activity. So they do look weak. KRMD, we've had an inside buy. They doubled down. They've Financials were good. We're not going to scream about them and say they were excellent, but they were good. And the chart is in a good position. It isn't going to hurt to put this on your watch list. I think she could give us something. I do. KRMD for the surprise play of the week. All the stocks we looked at, folks, I really do like. So do some more research on all these stocks, folks. It'll make me feel better if you do. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.